whether you're new to photography or you've been doing it a while or whatever, say you are used to doing more landscape or, or event photography, but you want to get into more of the portrait photography world um, or fashion photography or something where you're just, you know, you're in the studio more or whatever, um, it can be intimidating. I, w I used to be really intimidated by uh, photographing um, uh, with, a, with a person in, in the studio and it's just like, there's the there's the silence and it's just like oh man so I hope that I can pull off this technique and I hope that they don't they're not getting bored or you know my mind would kind of go get a little busy focusing on them rather than just focusing on my technique and so um, I will say that if you're if you're really new to lighting or whatever you know it might be easier just to practice on something like a, a vase of flowers or something that isn't going to make you sweat but once you are ready to start practicing with with someone you know get a friend, get a family member, whatever, or if you want to find a model, you could, you know, hop on Model Mayhem or Instagram or whatever, send your portfolio over, say, hey, look at my work, hit me up if you want to shoot, I'll give you photos for your time, um, and I'll just, you know, be able to practice. Um, once your subject is there, you have your subject, you're ready to shoot, whatever, I always have my subject just kind of sit in place while I get my settings figured out and I'll tell them like I'm just figuring out my settings. So just, you know, you can check your phone or whatever. This is going to take a few minutes and that way it takes the pressure off of me. And then, you know, I'll dial in all my lights and then once I'm ready, I'll tell them like, okay, well, let's shoot for a minute. And with each, you know, each shot, I want you to move a little bit, turn your head a little bit, not big adjustments, just little adjustments, little movements. And so I'll shoot for a minute and then I'll kind of slide over and show the back of my camera and review the image for both of us. You know, they might be looking at, oh, I need to fix my hair, or there's a hair tie on my wrist, or something that they, you know, didn't notice before. And for me, I'm looking at my settings, and I'm like, oh, man, I didn't notice the light spilling onto the background. I need to move the light a bit or flag the light or whatever. And then we'll make those adjustments, and then let's shoot for another minute. And then let's review those images. You know, and, and you know, typically, if you're, you're doing, like, a bigger shoot, production, you'll have, a, you'll have a creative director or a digital tech or someone that's seeing those things that you're not. You know, they're looking, you're shooting tethered to a monitor and they're looking at those things and they're like, hey, check your settings, make that change, notice that. But when you're just shooting by yourself, you don't have that luxury. So I found that that's helpful just to shoot, review, shoot, review, kind of go like that. You know, some people, when they're shooting personal work, they might assemble a creative team. They might have like hair and makeup or wardrobe. Um, They'll have assistants, they'll have, you know, two or three models, they'll have like kind of a bigger production behind it. And that's fine and everything. And I used to do more of those. But the problem with that is, you know, someone might show up late or someone might not show up at all. And, you know, it'll turn what otherwise could be a two hour shoot to test out a couple of techniques. It could turn into a whole day shoot because it took two hours in, in makeup and then it took an hour in uh, getting her hair done or whatever. And for me, I don't want to waste a whole day for a personal shoot. Um, so I'll just have my subject, you know, I'll say, hey, bring three or four outfits from your, from your home, from your personal wardrobe, or if you want to go pull, pull clothing from a, from, a, from a store, you're welcome to. Um, but then when they bring the, the stuff they show up for the shoot, I can look through and see like, oh, they brought a bunch of reds or a bunch of patterns and then I'll base my techniques off of what they brought. So it's just a real simple, pure collaboration. And because it is just the two of us, it, it breeds a little more intimacy. It's, it's a little more calm and relaxed and, and pure. And so we'll sit often for like a half hour before I even pick up the camera and just talk like, what's going on in your world? How, how have you been? Um, it's been a while since I've seen you. And some of the things they say might influence the way I, the way I shoot or the way I edit, you know. So that kind of informs the process. It makes it more specific to what we're doing. These personal shoots are just a great way of developing a style. You know, at first you might be doing it to learn a technique, but then after a while, you know, you've done this technique half a dozen times, so how can I take it into new territories? You know, push yourself beyond getting the shot, you know. When I was first working with a, a new technique, I would test it out and be like, oh, this, this technique worked, I pulled it off, I got these colors to come out exactly how I wanted, cool. Yes, shoot's over, you know. But since then, I've learned to push it a little bit further. So if this technique, yeah, I got it to work, but what if I added, 
you know, this other light, accent light, or what if I shot it from this other angle, or what if I added in multiple exposures, slow shutter, what if I took it into this other realm? Often, those, that's where the discoveries happen, um, rather than just replicating a technique over and over again. And so doing a personal shoot, like once a week, is, is super beneficial when it comes to like, you know, pushing yourself and growing, but also like clients that follow you or worked with you in the past or whatever, see, or following you on social media or whatever, they'll see those techniques and they're like, that new thing that you're doing, I want you to do that with me. You know? So for this next technique, we are going to be using uh, what's called a kukaloris or cookie for short. Um, in my books or previous videos, I've just referred to them as a gobo. A gobo is also kind of a similar thing where you, it's basically a shape maker, but a gobo actually attaches to the light. Um, sort of a, an easy way to think of it as a gobo, it's something that goes between. Um, cookie also te is technically what we're using here, um, but sometimes I'll, I'll just refer to them as a gobo. I'll get them mixed up or it's just a, an easier way to remember it for me. But anyway, uh, the basic idea here is that you're going to, you're using, usually you're using a hard light source because you want to create crisp shadows. Um, so if you're watching a movie or a, a TV show and you're looking at this light, especially like if you're seeing an interior shot, you're seeing this like light filling the room a lot of times they'll they'll shoot if they're shooting on a sound stage they might have like uh, different shapes that they have set up outside the shot so that they're shooting that light through those shapes to to cast those shadows of like a you know a tree or just implying that it's outside or whatever you know so if you have this skill, if you have this ability to create crisp shadows and whatever, you can really easily replicate the, the look of being outside, which is really beneficial if you're in a place that is, is bad weather all the time where it's overcast or raining or cold or whatever. And being able to be like, you know what, I'm gonna make this shot look like it was on a, you know, a cloudless sunny day. Um, and we can do that right here in the studio. So having a light that can make a good crisp light source, that's the first thing. Um, if you have a bigger, uh, like if say you have a pro photo light or, or something like that, the bigger the light source, um, the, the softer the appearance is. Um, so you're gonna have to have the space to back your light off. Um, I'd say at least 20 feet from your subject. I was doing a teaching a course uh, last year using a bunch of Bronkler lights that the that uh, it was at Santa Fe workshops and they had all their lights already. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just use your lights rather than bring all my lights. And to replicate some of the shots I do with speed lights, I had to have the lights back 30 feet to to get the same quality. Um, having a little speed light is actually going to be more beneficial and easier if you're trying to do this one specific thing. Like I recently had a shoot where I was shooting in this bar, this really dark small bar. It was like the ceiling was just like right above me. But I wanted to give the appearance of this shaft of light kind of coming through maybe like a skylight or something up. And I was able to position my tiny little cactus speed light in the corner with uh, little barn doors that I made out of foam core. And then just cast this little strip of light. And literally just physics won't allow you to do that with a bigger light source, not even the Godox AD200. So knowing how to create a certain kind of light is gonna really save you a lot of headache later when you're trying to like, you're literally fighting physics to, to make this happen. You're like, it, your light literally won't do that thing that you want it to do. So if you're wanting really, really crisp light, I do recommend getting a small little speed light, even if you already have a big pro photo system and you have your, your kind of rig all set up. Um, even, even just go to the camera shop and rent one, rent a speed light if, you don't, if you're cautious and you don't want to buy one, uh, but just see, do a side by side and that speed light, you, you're gonna be able to have it a lot closer so you don't need a big space and you're going to get such crisp, dark shadows, I promise. Um, so now when I go places, um, transition, when I go places, like I go to a thrift store, I go wherever, I'm always looking for things that will make unique shapes. You know, you can obviously, you can make your own cookies or gobos, um, but it's, for me, I like just looking for things. It, it makes it kind of an adventure, like a scavenger hunt, you know. So I went to a craft store and they sell fake plants that you want to make for arrangements or whatever. And obviously, if you're looking at them, if you're, 
you don't really want to shoot them directly because you can tell they're fake. But if you're using them to cast shadows, the shadows look real. Um, or different like materials, like this is metal uh, that I got at a craft store that has these different shapes in it. And so the rule when it comes to hard light is you want to get it as close to the subject as possible. The closer it is, the more defined the shape will be on your subject. So it's a balancing act because obviously you don't want it too close because then it'll be in the camera frame, you know. So usually this is like, um, I'm, I'm, I might be like at a low angle shooting up or I might be, you know, at the side shooting this way um, and getting kind of creative with it. If you do have the luxury of space and you have a bigger cookie, you could, you could position it a few feet back, but then you want your light to be even further back because you want it to be a crisp shadow. You know, if your cookie is way out here and your light is only 10 feet away from that, the shape is going to be really feathered. You're not going to have that crisp quality of shadows. So what I want to do is I want to make it look like we're outside, like and it's like a sunny day and like I'm shooting you against a blue sky and there's like these nice shadows on you. So what I'm going to do is I have a range of different fake plants and stuff that I got from a craft store, which is kind of great because they don't ever wilt. You don't have to replace them. You can pack them in your bag and travel with them easily. Um, and so what I'll do is I'm going to shoot just a range of shots and I'll have you kind of hold them since they're fake plants. I don't want them in the shot because okay. um, I don't want them to look fake. But if you kind of hold them like just kind of low, you know, so you, so if my focus is on you, yeah. I don't really see your hand, but like the light will kind of come through these and make these shadows on you okay. on your face. You know, um, so I'm just going to shoot a few shots and we'll see how it's looking and then we might re, you know, readjust, reposition, yeah. Can you raise, here, let me actually hold, hold it lower. Okay. There you go, so that way we can get that height without having your arm way up. So I'm gonna check my settings here. I'm gonna put my light at 1 8th power as a starting point. ISO 640 F8. Can you bring them just a little bit? Yeah, that way, it's great. And then can you just raise them up? A bit? Yeah, that's great. And if it gets to be where it's like kind of awkward, I can always like strap it to a light stand so you don't have to hold it. Oh, I'm, I'm okay with holding it. I'm gonna bring it kind of more like this. That's great. It's getting better, it's getting closer. And now bring it just a little closer. The closer it is to your face, the more defined the shadows are. So it's kind of a balancing act to not get it in the shot. Can you turn kind of your, what you're looking at, almost like, Almost like you're looking past the wall to the kind of to the horizon. That's great. I'm gonna rotate this. Try. I'm gonna hit the test button and see where that light's falling. Looks pretty good. That's, that's looking good. So the shadows look nice, but they're a little dense. So I want to try something where a little more light can kind of pass through, a different leaf shape. Let's try that instead. The nice thing about these plants is they have a wire running up through the stem, so I can arrange it just how I want it. So let's bring it pretty close to your face. I want to try to get it where it's like, this pattern's kind of running down your face. Bring it up and, yeah, that's great. Chin up a bit. That's great. That looks cool. Okay, so I've set up a background light, gelled cyan, and I'm going to try to make it look like you're outside against 
a blue sky here. We'll see if we have to move off the backdrop. I'm going to put it right behind you. The spread hopefully is even enough. We will see. Turn on my background light. Hit the same output, one eighth. All right, take a test shot, see where we're at. Background light is too bright. Cut it down to a 64th. So the front light is washing out the background. So what I'm gonna have to do is have you hop up if you wouldn't mind. So my hope here is to position my light right next to this big flag so that this light doesn't wash out the blue light on the background. So bring it a little closer to your face. That's better. So I'm gonna turn my background light up to 1 16th. That's really nice. Turn your, yeah, kind of what you're looking at. Bring the plant a little closer to your face. That's great. That's beautiful. Cool. And, and so now, now we have, I'll show you what we're getting here. We're getting like, Oh, wow. The light looks cool, but I want to see the shape more. Mm -hmm. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of have you hold it so that you can have it like kind of like really close to your face. Okay. And so just kind of hold it, whatever feels kind of the most natural. Bring it around more like that. That's great. Turn your body, your chest, everything kind of more this way. That's great. Beautiful. That's really nice. I'm going to position it just a little like that. A little bit. Give me a couple with your chin up, but your eyes closed. That's great. Love it. That's really nice. Cool. Oh, wow. So it kind of looks like uh, outside. Yeah, you know? that's the blue so crazy. Yeah, well, the that's nice where that nice falls. Well. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. And I want to try one other thing. I want to try, so what I've been using are these Godox AD200 flashes with the round head attachment to get even hard light. But I want to try to see if the Cactus RF60X gives a harder light quality to get more definition in these shadows. So it's less output, but a crisper more even light. You know, back in the day, like especially when I was in school and shooting film, you know, when I was in college, it was all film only, no digital, and uh, just like waiting for the weather to break. And then like, oh, the sun's out, we gotta shoot, we gotta shoot. And uh, just how stressful that is. And uh, to be able to just make your own sunlight is very beneficial. I'm going to go up to quarter power on the cactus since it's less output. Let's see if I can't piggyback these transmitters here. So I still have a Godox flash on the background. There we go. Bring it a little closer to your face it over, yeah. So that front light's a little bright. I'm gonna cut it down to 1 8 power. Still bright. 16th power. Raise it up and, yeah, that's great. Over just a hair, there you go. So that flag is 
not blocking all the light. That's great, I like that side eye. That's nice. So shadows are a little more crisp with this light. Let me I wanna to try to get I wanna to try to get this line to go right down your face. So I'm gonna just kinda of center it up. So as much as you can see the light and kinda of square up that line, just that'll help. And bring it a little closer. And so then if you turn your head toward me a bit, you have to kind of bring your arm too, just okay. to match that. Can you, can you turn toward me to say, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna bring this around more. Bring this flag back. Bring it up a bit and closer to your face a little. Let me see what that light's doing. That's great. Give me that side eye you did earlier. Yeah, love that. Love it. And then eyes back where they were. Yeah. Chin down a bit. Yeah. Yeah, and then do that chin up, eyes closed. That's great. Beautiful. Yeah, that's really nice. Wow. Looks great. It does really look like we're outside. Yeah. That's cool. so crazy. So the edge of the seeing the edge of the flag, you can see where the light's spilling. Yeah. So I wanna it just a hair and let me try a different leaf shape let's try let's try this guy these are nice leaf shapes flower shapes I guess so I never thought I'd be like excited to go to the craft store and buy a bunch of fake flowers but I was there and I was like wow these are half off and I just started like picking out all these so the nice thing is uh, when, uh, when you're looking just at the shape of things, it opens up a lot of possibilities. Turn, yeah, so the, these I want to, yeah, I want to get more cheek. Bring it just like more this way. Right yep, that, like right there. That's nice. Back that, what, or sorry, with your hand. Just, oh. yep, right there. That's great. Look at that. That's great. Bring it away from me a bit, yeah. That's great. And turn your head away from me a bit. Yep. That's great. Yep. Oh, I lost the flowers. Bring them back my way a bit. Like, keep them up. Yep, yeah, right there's great. Up, oh, maybe just a hair? Yeah. Make sure the. That's great. All right, so turn your head away from me a bit. Eyes to me. Yep. That's great. So these are like bigger. Ooh. Kind of interesting. Very interesting. Um, turn, what if you put your hair behind your ear and give me like, turn more into a profile. Okay. And maybe, that's great. That's better. Up and rotate it. Love that, love that. Earring's nice. Turn your head toward me just a hair. Beautiful. Up and rotate. 
Beautiful. Lower the flower just a hair. Beautiful. We're getting closer. That one looks wow. good. Wow. That one looks really good. Let me try that. Same everything with a with that original with the original leaf thing. See if I like that. Turn your head toward me a bit. That's great. That's great. Love it. Yeah. And even turn your head away from me more. Like, I want to get the back side of your profile. Like, just the edge of your eyelash and jaw. Turn your head away from me more. Can you hold the flower with the other hand so this arm can rest in your lap? Turn your head, or uh, rotate away from me, your whole body. More. Yeah. And just, yeah, just uh, hold, like, um, hold it with the other hand, and then rest this hand. Just, I want to get this arm kind of, like, more, like, rested like that. Bring it around right there. That's great. Turn your head away from me a hair. Beautiful. A little more. Love it. Beautiful. That's great. Cool, thank you. So it's a different kind of... Oh, wow. You know, it's not a side of someone that people normally pose, you know, but I like seeing the jawline and the eyelash. Mm -hmm.